winter is coming and not only the calendar but also cold weather, snow and frost. How will this affect the war, the course of hostilities? It's an important question and there are different opinions. Someone is sure that it's harder to wage war in winter and that means that the fights can gradually freeze. But there are other predictions as well, like if during a warm winter it's not easy to fight because of mood and if the winter is frosty, on the contrary, it's easier to organize and continue the contraoffensive. And here it's important to understand how will the nature of the war change with the once onset of winter. What will happen? to the delivery of ammunition and food. Who benefits from this winter? I'm Alexey Matsuka, and in this video we will talk about everything in detail. Military experts say that everything is not so simple. After all, winter weather is both a deterrent and an advantage that opens up new opportunities. Among the advantages, of course, is the fact that heavy equipment can move more easily on the frozen ground. It's only in movies, they say, tanks are not afraid of dirt. In fact, they are afraid that the soil soaked due to the autumn rains will be a huge risk for maneuvers. Another thing is if the ground freezes. On wet and snowy, relatively warm days, when the temperature is down to minus 2, minus 5 degrees, the passage of heavy equipment, tanks, armored personal carriers, infantry fighting vehicles, heavy artillery, slows down or even becomes impossible. Mounted on military equipment begins to bulk in the mud. Travel is possible only on roads, and you need to step on the fields. If the ground freezes, well, then the equipment maneuvers good enough, of course, if it is serviced and refueled according to the weather. Sergei Schwedt, military expert. The rule war is fought along the roads is especially true in bad weather. After all, you can't go into slush on rough terrain, military equipment can only move along roads, which means it becomes more vulnerable. Therefore, if the winter turns out to be warm, then according to experts, it all comes down to long artillery duels, as it was in the Donbass. Everything will drift into the face of reinforced artillery, because at this moment the war is 95% artillery. But I do not share the view that there will be a ceasefire at the front. Heavy artillery multiple volleys is also war. Petro Chernik, military expert. But the weather is also important for artillery. The tactics here have not changed. The crew fires a barrage, then it needs to change the location as quickly as possible, knowing that the enemy would bombard the old position. If the weather is snowy, then when regrouping, artillery system will leave a trail that enemy drones can see. But this is a minus that both Russia and Ukraine can use. More importantly, who will have more drones in the sky? We won't be able to fight like we did in spring and summer. Hiding will be much more difficult. We'll have to fight in new conditions. Mykola Beleskov, expert of the National Institute for Strategic Studies. Ukrainian and Russian military strategies differ in many ways. If Moscow is still acting according to the patterns of Soviet military theory, trying to break through the defense of the armed forces of Ukraine, then the Ukrainian style of warfare is completely different. It's based on speed and unexpected attacks. Therefore, with the worse and weather for Kyiv, there is a sudden challenge, experts in London say. The Ukrainian style of warfare is built on maneuvers that require speed and agility. Both are much more difficult to achieve in winter, so we will most likely see a slowdown from December to February. Mike Martin, senior fellow, King's College London. But Ukrainian experts argue with this. They say that a radical slowdown or even a pause in hostilities will not happen. 
Because unlike the Russian occupation troops, the Ukrainian army has been fighting on its native territory for more than a year and has significant experience in combat operation, including in winter. Russian aggression against our country has been going on for eight years and eight months. Let us recall the events of January-February 2015, when there were active hostilities for the Debaltsevo bridgehead. Did the winter conditions interfere with the conduct of the war? They didn't. Vladislav Selezhnev, military expert. Who is right here will become clear only in practice. But in any case, during the cold season, every logistic slips. The transportation of food and ammunition takes longer. The temperature also affects the effectiveness of personnel, the military themselves admit. It cannot be said that frosts of 5 or 10 degrees are critical. There are a number of other factors – wind, humidity. Many fighters consider the most unpleasant temperature around zero, because the snow spreads and flows into the trenches. Everything turns to dirt. You can't walk normally on plantains. The moisture penetrates everywhere. Therefore, it all depends on where the unit is, whether the snow is melting and so on. Alexander Karpiuk, Marine of the Marine Corps of the Armed Forces of Ukraine. This is a test for both armies, and more favorable conditions for war will be with those who are better prepared. How prepared is the Russian army for the cold? Russia deployed its troops for a full-scale invasion of Ukraine during the winter period from December 2021 20, to February of this year. Winter then did not prevent Moscow from preparing and conducting an offensive. But now it's different. Russia is on the defensive. And here one can only imagine what is happening with the material support of the Russian army, which has been replenished with mobilized troops. If even last spring, at the very beginning of the war, the Russian military suffered from frostbite due to bad shoes, clothing and lack of heating, then what will happen now, when the level of incoordination due to the retreat has increased significantly? Examples are discussed even in the British Minister of Defense. Recently, another Russian unit was deployed without food or socks and with few weapons. This is a disaster for a person going to the battlefield. Ben Wallace, United Kingdom Secretary of Defense. Dozens of videos have already appeared on social networks where Russian mobilized people complain that they were given airsoft vests instead of bulletproof vests, old hats and kerza boots. Very often Russians mobilized have to buy more or less decent ammunition at their expense. As a result, if their supply situation in the Russian army remains as it is, then winter will become a critical test for them. Russian troops will survive this winter much worse than the last. They already had very bad equipment then. We captured such people that we did not understand whether they were civilians or military. And we, the Ukrainian armed forces, now have a lot of uniforms supplied by Western partners. Oleksandr Karpiuk, Marine of the Marine Corps of the Armed Forces of Ukraine. Back in early August, Ukraine requested their supply of winter uniforms from the Western Allies. In preparation for the harsh winter, the US has sought to provide the Ukrainian armed forces with cold weather gear, including tens of thousands of jackets, fleece hats, boots and gloves, as well as generators and tents according to the Pentagon. In September, Belgium announced the supply of warm clothes and ammunition. In early October, Canada announced that it would supply Ukraine with 400,000 various items of winter equipment. Germany promised to supply tens of thousands of winter jackets, trousers and hats. 35,000 sets of winter uniforms were donated by Lithuania, 25,000 by Great Britain. And yet we need means of heating for trenches, including chemical heating pads, electric furnaces, generators, special grease for weapons, wheel chains and so on. And all this must be delivered promptly. And here, according to the Pentagon, the Russian army is also not alright. 
The Russian army is fighting in a foreign country. Ukrainians have made their supply roads problematic. It will be difficult for them to deliver the equipment necessary for the effective conduct of hostilities to the troops. Lloyd Austin, U.S. Secretary of Defense. The third critical aspect is the operation of the electronics. There is no substitute for reconnaissance with the help of quadcopters. And in winter, in the cold, drone batteries work out their resources several times faster. The same problem with radio stations. And so the advantage at the front line will be given to those who have more batteries in stock. The weather can be a problem for drones, but everyone will be under the same conditions. However, the Ukrainian army will be more prepared and more effective on the eve of winter. Ben Hodges, former commander of US forces in Europe. The Western military is con confident that Ukraine will be better prepared for winter than Russian troops thanks to supplies from allies. But if we put technology aside, then from a strategic position, who benefits from winter? Let's immediately put aside the fact that Russia wants to use winter as a weapon against the civilian population of Ukraine. Here, the intentions of the Kremlin are obvious. The Kremlin's representatives speak openly about them to leave people without electricity, water and heat, trying to force Kyiv to negotiate and compromise with them. But let's figure it out what will happen directly at the front line. The Russian army withdrew from the right bank part of the Kherson region and, according to the military experts, transferred a significant part of the troops to the Zaporizhzhia direction and to the Donbass. An indicator of this may be the intensified battles in the Donetsk region. The enemy does not stop shelling the positions of our troops and settlements near the line of contact. In the Bakhmut and Avdiivka directions, the enemy is concentrating its efforts on conducting offensive operations. From the message of the general staff of the armed forces of Ukraine. And the increased activity of the Russian army in the area of Bakhmut, Solidar and Siversk is precisely explained by the fact that it, it's in a hurry trying to capture these settlements and arrange conditions for wintering. For Russians, there is a huge difference to wait out the winter in the field, in the trenches in front of Bakhmut, or to build a front line along these settlements. Accordingly, it, it is a critically important for the Ukrainian army to maintain control here. Therefore, difficult battles in the east can continue all winter. On the other sector of the front, Zaporizhia, on the contrary, there is a prospect for the armed forces of Ukraine to open a counteroffensive. For Ukraine, this is a, perhaps the most important direction in terms of opportunities. The most attractive and tempting for the armed forces of Ukraine would be an offensive from the Zaporizhia direction to Melitopol in order to cut off the land corridor to the Crimea. The success of such an offensive would greatly complicate the position of the Russian group in the Crimea and on the left bank of the Kherson region, primarily in terms of logistics. David Gentleman, Israeli military expert. After Ukraine seized the strategic initiative at the end of the summer and launched two major counteroffensive in autumn, all indications are that Russia is now on the strategic defensive. Hence, another prediction that apart from the set goals in the Donbass, Moscow is unlikely to try to go on the offensive anywhere. Evidence that the Russian side will not budge is a demobilized, but actually untrained foot soldiers. Such a reinforcement is not capable of carrying out operations of the combined forces, which require coordinated actions using tanks, artillery and infantry. At the same time, the Ukrainian army conducts such operations. Frank Ledvich, military intelligence officer, lecturer at the University of Portsmouth.
Western military experts are less sure that Russia sets itself the task for this winter to hold defense in the occupied territories, apparently expecting that in winter its army will not have to move much, as the advancing troops do. And in order to neutralize this advantage, the US is advising Ukraine to also adjust its tactics. Everything looks like the Ukrainians are going to continue the offensive, organizing sabotage and subversive attacks on Russian defense lines, including sabotage in the territories controlled by Russia inside Ukraine. Says Jones, senior vice president, Center for Strategic and International Studies. Apparently, realizing this and in general assessing all the winter challenges and threats that we talked about, the Kremlin would like a ceasefire during the winter, intending to strengthen the position, bring the material support and train those who were mobilized as part of the recent wave. There are increasing reports in the media that Moscow is also preparing a second wave of mobilization, which will begin in December and January, that is designed to strengthen Russian forces next spring and summer. And for this, Russia also needs time, which means an operational pause at the front. But Ukraine, holding the initiative, cannot afford to lose it, since this will greatly complicate the nature of the war. The head of the Pentagon's is sure. Ukrainians know that giving the Russian occupiers the opportunity to rest, re-equip and rearm is a mistake. I don't believe they would make such a mistake. Lloyd Austin, US Secretary of Defense. To sum up, how the situation will develop in winter depends largely on the flow of resources, on whether Russia will be able to prepare and transfer those mobilized to the front. For Ukraine, it depends on how actively supplies of Western aid and weapons will go. But despite the worsening weather, the fighting is likely to continue. But where will the armed forces of Ukraine start to advance in the end, and where else can the temperature rise at the front line? We will definitely talk about this in the further videos. Thanks for watching and see you soon.